Hello, hello my friends and I don't even know how to start this video. Um, I am filming this at the end of 2022 and when you guys watch it it's going to be at the start of the new year. I'm reflecting, I'm kind of going through what's happened over the last 12 months and actually I found it really powerful because every year I pick a word of the year and what that does is it helps me stay focused. Um, for any eagle eye viewers, I actually have the words framed on the right side of my wall here. So every year I pick a new word um, and I get it framed and so that it is always in front of me reminding me what direction I want to go in. And my word for this year was consistency. Now, up until I sat down and reviewed everything, I actually felt quite deflated because originally my approach to consistency was going to be marketing, turning up, doing a weekly YouTube video, a daily reel on Instagram, all of the pressures <laughs> that being a solopreneur, a business owner, running this one woman show, all of the pressures that that brings, I just kind of went gung-ho into feeling like I had to be consistent across the board and on surface level reflection I actually felt like I'd failed miserably but what I really want to do with you guys I hope you've got a cup of tea poured I certainly do um here I'm in my cozy clothes I'm just winding down reflecting and leaping forward into 2023 with the right energy I'm not just going to go through the highlights I'm also going to be very open honest raw and real with you guys as always and I'm going to touch upon the low lights because I can absolutely learn from those as well. Um, so if you want to join me for the fun and join the journey, get the kettle on, go pour yourself a drink and let's jump in. So first things first, this time last year, I had only just moved house. I'd literally just moved into this studio. I had downsized from the farm. That in itself was incredibly stressful. And I am a first time solo homeowner. And I really naively thought I could pack up my studio, take two weeks off work and completely move in here and be up and running again at Done and Dusted. And that wasn't the case. Now, I'm so lucky for being a homeowner. I mean, I bought this home in my 20s, that's phenomenal. What an achievement. I understand how fortunate I am, but it hasn't come without its stresses. Buying this house really has started an entirely new chapter in my life, for good and for bad, but obviously mainly good. It really kind of shook me to my core. Things didn't happen as quick as I thought they would. The entire move was stressful, moving into this studio, um, but ultimately January was all about settling, finding my feet and just really starting a brand new chapter. And speaking of a new chapter, probably one of the most important transformational things to have happened this year was introducing the Create, Cut, Construct framework cycle into my membership, the DPL Atelier. And so January was where we kicked off the first ever framework and I didn't know if it was going to work. I definitely believed that it could but again because everything was on my shoulders and down to me to guide my members I had a lot of imposter syndrome I'm not gonna lie. Um, so the create cut construct framework the premise of it is that we pick one garment style every three months and we design it in month one, we draft the pattern in month two to our very own body measurements and then we construct it and sew it up at the machine in month three. So the first ever garment style we did was a shirt. Now even that in hindsight, when I was nervous about the framework cycle working, I picked quite a complex garment and actually my members totally rose to the challenge because a shirt has so many transferable skills. You've got your button stands, you've got your collars, you've got your sleeve plackets, you've got your cuffs, um, you've got drafting a block from scratch. And so I really kind of went hell for leather right out of the gate. And it was great to kickstart that month, of course, with a three day design challenge. And at the start of this year, I was so blessed to pair with YKK. This is the first time I'm seeing it. This is the first time you're seeing it. This is the first time we're seeing it. Come on. <laughs> it's 
Oh my God, love that. I've never seen that before. No way. Oh, cool. This is so cool, but I hate touching velvet. Whoa. That is so cool. Print anything on the zipper tape. I mean, if anybody can geek out over zips, it's us, isn't it? What? So this is like a curved zipper. Plant-based tape. And then the back of it is all just neon. That is so cool. I was fangirling, let me tell you. <laughs> YKK is like the biggest manufacturer of high-end quality zips and they were the friendliest people, the most wonderful team. I would like to say a massive thank you to Stefania and they sponsored the challenge and they didn't just sponsor the challenge in January, they sponsored it again and again. When February came around, I actually had a really tough month, personally. Um, tying back into the commitment of being a homeowner, a solo homeowner, um, and my outgoing shot up. I had a lot of bills to pay, I had a mortgage to uphold, and my income from Zandra Jane Design, which is my other business where I set up fashion companies for a living, took a nosedive because we've entered a recession and not many people seem to be starting a fashion brand um, at the time. I also, without going into details, kept running my business down under the impression I was moving into my house and a few delays happened and I just kept getting set back and set back. So I really worked Zandra Jane Design down trying to have a quiet period to allow me to move and when February came back around I found it quite challenging to drive that back up um, and that's just being completely honest and so I actually had to diversify my services which had a lot of internal dialogue around it because as a fashion designer, I felt like I was regressing. Um, but I actually secured a client for a long-term contract, which thank you very much has saved my skin, um, for marketing management. And rather than see it as a negative because I did have that conversation with myself for a long time, I actually realized how much being self-employed and running businesses had diversified my skills. So I think it's really important to take that approach to reframing my mindset forward um, from here and throughout the next year. We also had our first cut month in the DPL Atelier, which is where we pattern draft our chosen garment styles. And as you know, from January, we were drafting a shirt. And so I was teaching my members how to draft a shirt block to their measurements. I was teaching them how to draft collars, cuffs, sleeves, plackets, button stands. Um, and that was really fulfilling and exciting. And we all thrived off the structure of it. What transpired in March was their own me made garments and the results that followed and that was really, really lovely to not only be a witness to, but from a very egotistical <laughs> standpoint, I felt really proud because when March rolled around and people had genuinely designed their own garments, drafted the pattern and made it from just buying ready shop bought sewing patterns to designing, making, and wearing their very own garments, I knew from that moment on that the Create, Cut, Construct framework was a success. Honestly, it is one of the biggest rewards as to why I do what I do, and to be able to share that with my members, of course they get one-on-one -on -one support, I'm there designing alongside them, I made a glitch shirt and I had a photo shoot, and that's an upcoming sewing pattern, um, so like, it was just, it gave me the structure that I needed as well. And then to realize that I can do it time and time again, every three months we pick a new garment style, was a really exciting prospect to look forward to. So as March came around, I was actually feeling really confident and really proud of myself. And following a turbulent February where I had to make a few career decisions, it was the pick me up that I definitely needed. In my personal life, and I will just touch upon a few things, we'll keep this as sewing and fashion related as possible, but I started riding the ironically named horse at the farm called Zen. <laughs> now, if you follow me on 
on Instagram. Like, I'm horse mad. I'm animal mad. Like, that is where my broody gene went. It skipped the children. Give me four legs, furry bodies. Zen is a French Arab and he is anything but calm and chilled. The silliest name for the craziest horse. And I started riding him. Now, he has bucked me off three times on the mountain. And so to revisit it after a long journey with my personal riding lessons and confidence and you've got a lot more to risk when you're an adult in the saddle um, than when you're a kid and you kind of just go hell for leather at anything. The confidence I've built on the back of this horse over the year really transferred through to other areas of my life and we built a connection. It really helped me. When my career is so creative and for a long, long time, sewing and fashion were kind of the only dynamic to me and my personality. And the last two, three years, I've gotten back in the saddle and it's really given me that sense of passion again back in my life. Don't get me wrong, I am so grateful that I get to create for a living. I get to be creative, I get to design, I get to gift that to other people. I'm passionate about my job. But to be able to get back in the saddle and do something that doesn't... There's no pressure for me to earn money from it. It's so in the moment. It's very meditative for me. Um, the place where I live, the, the farm, I mean, is gorgeous. It's got the best scenes in South Wales and I won't hear any different. To start that journey on Zen, who is not a straightforward horse to ride, Zen has a lot more spice. And so it has been a very challenging journey, but I wouldn't have traded it for the world because he has taught me so, so much. So March, for that reason, was actually very pivotal, following a rocky start to the year. And so we kickstarted April with another three day design challenge where we were looking at designing our very own sundress. And then of course, for those that wanna then join the membership, we take that forward into making it. So when April came around, my members and I, after the technicality and complexity of the shirt, actually really welcomed a little bit more of a friendly, beginner friendly maybe, um, easier experience with a sundress. As a nod to YouTube, which is where you're going to be watching this, April was the month that I hit 1,000 subscribers. Now, um, okay, I'm not a 100,000 influencer. I don't think I want to be. <laughs> I don't think I'd want that pressure. But I celebrate every little win, and so I'd like to thank you. If you don't follow me on Instagram or Facebook, um, or you're not on my email list and you're, you're here on YouTube and that is how we communicate, then I genuinely want to really thank you for sharing this journey and supporting me. Um, I also launched my masterclasses in April. Now, I realised that I was churning out weekly workshops for my members with this kind of create week one, two, three, cut week one, two, three. I was constantly giving them high value, bite-sized, chunks of fashion information. And I decided to make that available for anybody who wasn't a member. I am so passionate about making fashion accessible for everybody because it is a very elitist industry. I wouldn't be where I am now without a lot of people in my life who've supported me, i.e. big shout out to my dad, you know, going through university, it's such an expensive university course to take because not only are you paying for the tuition fees, you're paying for fabrics, materials, costs. Honestly, it racked up. And following that, you do free internships and have to work in London. And it really is elitist because not everybody is as privileged to be able to go through that. And so as I was giving these awesome high value low cost don't get me wrong the dpl atelier is crazy low cost for crazy high value but for some people a membership is not feasible or it might just not be their preferred way of learning and so april was the month i decided to make the master classes available for each and every one of you. You can go on the shop, you can have a browse, you can pick and choose what you wanna learn. And then of course, for anybody who is interested, you can come and join the DPL Atelier. And to make things even more accessible, I actually give you your money back off your masterclass for your first month. And finally in April, what a lovely way to go out on the month was that I had won best luxury sewing pattern business in the small medium enterprise awards. Um, and 
what a lovely way to be recognized. I really felt like this year I'd had my head down and I was a lot more behind the scenes nurturing my members than front of house. Um, and so to still be recognized was lovely. It was such an honor and it gave me a nice little nudge in the right direction. Highlights and lowlights from May then actually include quite a bit of a low light. I seriously injured myself on the back of Zen, not so Zen, the gorgeous fiery spicy horse. Um, I had an instructor come and teach me privately on him because I was experiencing some issues as we were hacking out. He'd be playing up. For any horsey people out there, please don't stress. We've had him checked by the vet or everything above board. It's just his personality. He's a little bit of a fiery guy. Um, and he gave me whiplash and I very, very seriously damaged my back. My, I have scoliosis anyway, if anyone's interested. Um, I got a nice curvy little spine going on. And as he was bronking with me and having one of his moments in the school, um, I went up as he came down. And then as he came back up to uh, bronk again, I came down and pff, I just, I remember the feeling of my back just kind of going. You watching this might escape through sewing and creativity, but when that's my nine to five and my job, my escapism is getting outside being with my animals and the horses. After I really injured my back, um, obviously I couldn't ride him for a little while and I took a little bit of time to reflect. And by the time I got back in the saddle, it was like me and him had just come to some unspoken understanding. So it really was a bit of a low light because of physically it completely restricted me. And I think maybe mentally, <laughs> As you're transitioning from your 20s to your 30s, there might be a psychological barrier there or something. Um, obviously, I'm still very young, but it's another decade. It's another phase and chapter. And I think I was like, wow, my body is actually not indestructible. Another thing I did come May following Whiplash once I recovered was I launched a pattern cutting basics course. Now this had been on my list since 2021. And the moment I launched it, it was one of those moments where I was like, why didn't I do this sooner? Because you guys loved it. So over the course of three lessons, you learn tools and terminology, you'll learn measurements and markings, and you'll learn basic pattern drafting techniques. It's beginner friendly. It helps you get started with your own patterns without the overwhelm. And it's completely free. I will link everything I speak about in this roundup down below. But I had such lovely, wonderful feedback. And I'm really happy that you guys are learning from this, taking value from it. And I've just had some really nice personal comments as well. And that's always so lovely and rewarding, knowing that what I'm putting out there is genuinely helping you. So that was a big, big tick. And it balanced out the whiplash, you know? It was... We broke even by the end of May, we were fine. <laughs> June, June, June. Come June, I turned the big three zero and the entire year, I think I was having a psychological battle with it. Um, feeling like I hadn't achieved what I wanted to achieve by this age. And a lot of that comes down to social media and what you see online and where people are and where you think you should be. Um, but as I say, doing this year reflection actually made me realize how far I'd come and the foundational work I'd put in. Digital Pattern Library is a very new business. Xandra Jane Design is something I have done for years working with my clients um, and was actually a lot more well established. Digital Pattern Library is was only in its infancy and seedling stage and to have grown it to where it is now, to have the membership to all of the things I've achieved is nothing to be sniffed at. And I think, I, can, I don't know if that's the same. I think I can be really hard on myself with being self-employed and ambitious and a self-starter. You do just constantly move the goalposts. And so come my birthday, it was actually a really good time for me to just step back and evaluate. So I turned 30. I also wore my Glinda of Sundress from the second Create Cut Construct Framework Cycle to a friend's 
wedding. They had it at a place called Glyndura Vineyard, which means Valley of the Water, hence the name of this upcoming sewing pattern. And I, of course, took you guys along the journey. I'm really getting to grips with trying to film process videos and take you along, you know, designing, drafting, and making a garment. I personally, to be totally honest with you, find it really difficult to stop and film because when I'm creating, I get into such deep work that to set up a camera angle and to move it around and to stop and start and all of that is a struggle, but it is something that I'm gonna work on so much more in 2023 um, because I do believe, if you let me know in the comments, that you like to see the process. And of course, it's so lovely to take you along the journey. So to be able to wear that to my friend's wedding and the first sample, there were minor tweaks to be made on it, which I was really chuffed with. And I can't wait to be bringing that pattern out for you guys in 2023. July rolled around and so did the third Create Cut Construct framework of the year and following the complexity of the shirt, the simplicity of the sundress, I felt like I'd found the sweet spot by doing our very own trouser patterns. However, trousers are notoriously technical when it comes to fitting them. So we kick-started the trouser framework with another three-day design challenge. Of course, the three-day design challenge is open to you guys as well and I design real time alongside you teach new industry standard techniques. My members get to attend for free as a membership perk and then whatever they design during the design challenge they can turn into a real garment over in the membership. So trousers was where it was at. Um, by this month I had also really kept up with a, another personal resolution which was to go on a monthly walk with my dad. Carving out that time to spend with my loved ones, especially again, coming, I sound like a broken record, but when you're self-employed, my partner's a farmer, so he literally works 24 seven, well, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, Christmas day, like animals don't take any time off. So there isn't really anyone in my close vicinity to encourage me to step back and take a, a breather and do that self-care and nurture relationships. Finally then, something that I actually kept a little bit quiet, and I mean, it's not like I'm a vlogger on this channel, okay? And I'm definitely not gonna turn into one, but I actually abseiled <laughs> 133 foot down the side of a building in Cardiff Bay called the St. David's Hotel. Now my friend approached me two days before it happened asking me to join her. She was doing it in aid of charity for Big Moose who were helping raise money in their Project One Million task for mental health causes. I didn't need a reason, in all honesty. I was more than happy to yeet myself off the side of a building, um, all in the name of good fun, but the fact that we got to further raise money for some fantastic causes obviously made it all the worthwhile. And the views on tour up there were phenomenal. It really was a once in a lifetime experience. And so I wanna thank my friend deeply for that, for inviting me along, and what a highlight of July that was. As August rolled around, a crescendo had been building all year. Ben, my partner, had asked me to come on board and do the marketing for his Garth Country Fair. So at his farm, which is actually situated on Cardiff's highest point, honestly, panoramic views, what I was saying about riding around there on the horse earlier, um, we opened it to the public and we held a charity event in aid of Royal Welsh Agricultural Society Glamorgan and T Haven Children's Hospice Charity, where all proceeds were divvied up between them. We had sheepdog demonstrations, gun dog demonstrations, craft stalls, food vendors, um, tractor trailer rides to the highest point from the from the yard, and I was asked to join about April, so April to August. Honestly, I was working on Zandra Jane Design, Digital Pattern Library, my marketing manager client role that I picked up in February, and on my partner's uh, farm and business, I was spent. <laughs> By the end of August, I had honestly been burning the candle at both ends. We raised 
over £9,000 for charity and I am so proud of my partner. I'm so proud of his family. It really was another sense of community and I think although consistency was my word of the year, community actually was a really strong underlying tone and I had the most rewards throughout the year from having that sense of community in multiple projects that I was managing. August was also cut month in the atelier and of course we were drafting our very own trouser patterns to our measurements. I was teaching my members um, how to fit the crotch curve, I was having a really rewarding experience, I really value what teaching has done for my own learning process as well because it really enables me to not only reabsorb the information that I already know but clarify it because obviously in my head I kind of know it's a second nature thing to me but when I have to articulate it and teach it it actually reaffirms the knowledge and so teaching trouser amendments I combined it into a really bite-sized fashion file pack um that again is yours for 4 99 if you want it it is high high value but to be able to gift this to my members was a really rewarding experience As September rolled around, I finally succumbed to COVID. It found me, um, it really knocked me for six. But up until that, I had actually been doing a daily TikTok for Zandra Jane Design, helping people with bite-sized bits of information on how to set up and establish their own fashion brands. You might be able to hear my dog in the background as I give you this quick tip. But are you unintentionally greenwashing within your brand? And do you know the important difference between sustainable, ethical and slow? Now you'll see quite a few brands interchangeably use these keywords and they actually all mean something completely different. So sustainability, when we refer to sustainable fashion, is all about the materials you use, the closed circle production, and the environmental impact that you have when you produce your garments. Ethical fashion is about the footprint and the mark you leave on humans and animals, the cost of labour, are you paying your workers fairly? And then slow fashion is all about the timelessness of things. Are your clothes built to last? Are you rebelling against fast fashion? Are you doing so in a genuine manner? To deep dive into this and to hear me talk without my dog panting in the background, come and visit me at sandrajanedesign.com. I had challenged myself to try and be consistent with my marketing, that is my word of the year again, um, and succumb to COVID. So again, I felt at the time that it had really, I really failed, but in reality, I had reverted back to giving value and sharing and the rewards that that brings and being so totally honest with you, when you are running a business and when times are tough, it gets very hard not to reconnect to that element of what you do when you actually need to pay your bills. And that was the reality for me several months of this year. It has been a roller coaster. Um, but every single time I've reflected in this year, I've been at my happiest and most content when I have delivered that value and I've seen the rewards that that has given other people. That's not to say, <laughs> I don't care about paying my bills because I do. I like keeping afloat, I like surviving. Um, but it, it was just a really nice way to ground myself, realign and come back to the big why. I also had another photo shoot and they are always, always fun with the amazing Gemma Griffiths photography. We had some really fun, enjoyable photo shoots this year. Um, I do it with my friend Eliza over at Eliza Eliza UK and we just flounce around outdoors, do a few outfit changes. I managed to get a few sample shots of the glitch shirt, which is my next upcoming sewing pattern. And they're just great days out. So they were definitely little highlights and memories of the year. And then of course, September being the third month of our trouser framework meant that we were constructing our trousers. And I finally finished my flamingo trousers. Now it was so lovely to highlight that what I teach is design, and again, if you want to learn that, come over and try the three-day design challenge where I guarantee I will help you design your own clothes in the space of three days. But all that happened with my flamingo trousers was I added a front hip pocket and a waistband and made sure they fit me bloody well. 
and I chose a really funky fabric. The fabric was the design element. I didn't do fancy seam lines, I didn't do interesting silhouette, I just made a basic block trouser that fit me like a glove and I picked a quirky print and I'm really proud of them. I can't wait to make a matching blazer so I can have a coordinated look in the new year and it was such a joy to share that with my members and of course the best part of it is seeing what my members produced and by this time we had done three framework cycles so to see the skill level improve as well from design through to drafting and wearing their garments is such a joy. I'm genuinely watching my members blossom into their own designers um, each and every week. October rolled around and we were ending the year on a bang. It was our final framework cycle of the year and I had introduced us to designing, drafting and making a basic coat. Now this design, this is a toile, but this design I've got to say has been my personal favourite of the year and it has been so lovely to take that personal journey as well. When I'm working with my clients, my creative battery is given solely to them and for a long, long time before I introduced the Create Cut Construct framework cycle, I had nothing left in the tank to design for me. This year, because of the Create, Cut, Construct framework cycle, my personal sewing journey has come on leaps and bounds. I've become more confident in my wardrobe. I've played around with colour, and that is absolutely 100% down to the Atelier and the Create, Cut, Construct framework cycle. So the basic coat framework was underway. Of course, yet again, we kickstarted things with the three day design challenge. October was also the month I won my third award of the year. Just before um, 2022, I had won Fashion Designer 2122 in the Wales Prestige Awards. I then won Best Luxury Sewing Pattern Business, and October saw me honoured with Best Digital Design Platform. I really am blown away by these um, achievements because I've been a finalist many, many times. I've been recognised before, but to win three awards in one year has been an honour. So that was a really lovely surprise as well. Now I did just want to touch upon a small low point in the year, mentally by the end of October, whether I was burnt out from burning the candle at both ends all year, from juggling three to four businesses at any one time. Although I had been meeting up with my dad every month, I live with my partner and have done for the seven years of our relationship. I was getting outside, I was definitely having sunlight every day with the horses and the dogs, but I really, really felt lonely and it was a really tough realisation for me. Although we can feel like a burden at times by feeling negative and putting that negativity on your friends or even when you don't feel like it, the last thing you want to do might be to see people because your mental health is low. Really, truly try and reach out. Reach out to someone that you trust. I have a lot of people in my life, I'm so thankful and grateful to say, who um, I trust with my life. They are the best people. I have a good group around me, but I really retreated into myself. I buried my head in my work. A lot of what I was doing was online and through a screen only. And although nine out of 10 times I am a very positive, happy, happy person, um, it just really got on top of me by the end of October. And it took quite a bit of courage from me to reach out and be vulnerable with my friends. And the moment I did, even just having a conversation on the phone, I felt so much lighter, so much better, and I knew that that support was there for me. Just when I was having a little heart-to-heart -heart with you, the memory card got full. Um, so what I was saying um, is, if you do find yourself in that position, especially this time of year, the festive period and New Year energy can be actually quite negative for some. Um, I know there have been times in my life where that has certainly been the case for me and my family for personal reasons. If you can just reach out, it's the hardest thing to do, but by the time you have that one conversation, I promise you will feel lighter, better, and more supported. And what really helped me was reframing it into thinking about a friend. And if my friend felt that way, how I would really want them to get in touch with me. And of course I'd be there, I wouldn't judge them. I just want them to be happy. And that is what really helped me reach out to a few people. And within seconds, 
they picked me up and I just felt warm and loved again. Again, same thread as spending time with my dad and my loved ones. I've just learned to try and bring a bit more balance in my life so that it isn't just work, work, work. So when November rolled around, I obviously had the most wonderful girls weekend in London with a friend and it was so lovely to go to London with no other reason than to chill out and see a loved one because when I worked in London, I have always said when you're in a big city like that, New York, wherever, you either have the money but you don't have the time or you have the time but you don't have the money to enjoy the city because you're either working to the bone or vice versa and this was the first time I could go to London with the money and the time and see my friend and just really really enjoyed it um so that was a really nice highlight in November following a little bit of a turbulent start to the final quarter. Of course it was cut month in the DPL Atelier so we are drafting our basic coat blocks and I was also teaching my members how to shape them as well. Seeing everything come to life, always so much fun. And then finally, my friends, we have rolled around to December. Now, if you've made it to this part of the video, hats off to you. I hope you've enjoyed the journey and a few personal truths, a few monsters in my closet and just being completely open and honest with you. But December, I'm pleased to say that this month has really ended on a lovely high, going into the new year with the right energy, the right mindset. Of course, we have constructed our basic coat designs and I've ended on um, really loving where this is going. Let me bring Matilda in. This is my Vertigo coat. So again, this is gonna be a sewing pattern coming up in 2023. I'm finally in the new year, gonna be releasing sewing patterns again. It has been years. It has been definitely over two years since I last launched a sewing pattern. And that in part is due to Digital Pan Library taking a direction I just never thought it would. But this, along with my Glindor dress and my Glit shirt, is um, an upcoming sewing pattern called the Vertigo Coat. Now I have twirled it, I'm gonna sample it, I'm gonna wear it everywhere. Um, so it was such a lovely way to round off the year in the membership with Construct Month on our basic coats. I also hosted a Build Your Dream Wardrobe webinar. It was the first webinar I've ever done and it was amazing. Um, I'm so grateful for everyone who turned up to it. I thought I picked a silly date. It was the 22nd of December, which was quite close to Christmas, um, but the turnout was amazing. The questions asked were amazing. And it was all about analyzing your existing wardrobe, planning for the future, and understanding how to dress yourself with confidence in pieces that fit and flatter your unique figure. And I really think, apart from being able to again share that value, it was such a lovely touch point for how far I'd come on my journey as well and my confidence and my personal experience building my dream wardrobe. And I can just confidently say that I am practicing what I'm preaching. Okay, your girl still loves her comfy clothes, but to have that creative outlet, to reconnect to my passion of horses, to really invest in my relationships and my loved ones around me, um, it was such a lovely way to round off the year and those relationships genuinely and sincerely now include my members who many of them, if not all of them, I genuinely consider friends. Building those connections has been one of the biggest highlights of the year. Um, to have members come to the Garth Country Fair in Cardiff, to have a member come and have a coffee with me um, on her travels, it's just been such a joy. And the Build Your Dream Wardrobe webinar was a lovely accumulation of that joy where we all congregated, new faces, old faces, new friends, old friends, and we connected over what this is all about here at Digital Pattern Library, which is a love for fashion and clothing. So although I don't think I've been consistent in the way that I initially wanted to be, which is again, from a very logical, practical standpoint of showing up every day online and posting this many posts and making sure I release sewing patterns this many months, 
I've actually been so consistent in other areas of my life. I've been so consistent in nurturing my members and next year I am ready to be consistent a little bit more on the front of house. So if you're watching this, you have got to keep me accountable. If you notice I don't post, give me a comment, give me a nudge, but I've already got it planned. I've already got it scheduled. So you will be seeing this face much more often. I'm picking two words for next year. My 2022 is going to be about momentum and routine because I think leaning into my routine and carving out that time for both professional and personal really helps me restore balance. It really keeps me mentally strong and it really enriches my life. And then the momentum that that creates for me, the only way is up. So I am feeling very, very positive. I can't thank you all enough for joining me on the journey. And I really want to know if you have made it to the end of this video, what your word for 2023 is gonna be. Let me know in the comments. I'm gonna say this for the first time ever. Click like and subscribe. <laughs> Let's jump in to the new year with new energy. By the time you're watching this, we have started our fifth framework cycle in the DPL Atelier. We are making our very own blouse designs. Come and join us, see what it's all about. I could not want any more than for you to join our creative community, which is a safe online space for you to express yourself through clothes. Let me help you build your dream wardrobe, designed by you, made by you, worn by you, because that is what I'm gonna be doing to my very own wardrobe. And I cannot wait to continue my personal sewing journey and to share that with you for as long as you'll have me. So I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful start to your new year. I really hope that 2022 brought with it some reflections, good and bad, but ultimately reframing your mindset to make the most of those. And I can't wait to see where your journey takes you as well. Thank you for joining me. Stay safe, keep creative, and I will catch you on the flip side.